Last time, we created the state module which defines the data for our Tetris game. Additionally, we wrote an update function which describes how our game changes each time an input is received. Finally, we plug that into the foldp function which calls update each time an input is received which resulted in a signal of states. In this video, we'll continue by adding an input called tick which we'll use to move the Tetris piece on the screen downward. Let's start by opening up our control module. Then, let's import the time module, exposing the time type. The time type is just an alias for float, however, it is useful because it makes it clear what the context of that float is. The time module has several functions for creating signals based on time. For our game, we will be exposing the FPS function. FPS is a function which takes in a number representing the desired frame rate. It then produces a signal of time where each value represents the time that passed since the last value was received. With this in mind, let's add a new constructor to our input type. We'll call it tick, and it will take a time as an argument. Next, let's create a signal of our ticks. Notice that the type of this signal is signal input and not signal tick. This is because tick is a member of the input type and is not a type itself. We now need to convert our signal of time which we're getting from the FPS function into an input. Anytime we're trying to change the type of a signal, it means we want to use the map function. So let's wire it up. I'll go ahead and specify that I want to try to maintain 30 frames per second. To test it out, let's go ahead and change our main function to show ticks rather than inputs. And there it is. Notice that it is sticking to right around 33, and it happens to be in milliseconds. Great! Now all we need to do is merge these two signals so we can get both of them. We can do this using the merge function found in the signal module. Let's start by adding a let expression in our inputs function and moving ticks inside. Then we'll merge our two signals, ticks and keys. One thing to note here is that the merge function expects signals of the same type. This means we can't merge FPS with keys. Finally, let's update our main function to use inputs again. Let's refresh. All right, I'm not sure if you can see it because the tick is so fast, but when I press the arrow keys, I get a quick flicker of the associated input. Just so you can see it, let's move our FPS down to one. Notice that inputs fire now when I press a key, and then when the tick happens, it overrides it. All right, let's turn the frame rate back up and save. Next time, we'll take what we've done here and add it to the state module. 